Captain Caveman. Kickers aren't <laughs> supposed to have nicknames like that. Gentlemen, Captain Caveman. Certainly, he found the opening there. Those of you in uh, Rocky Mountain region can catch the Colorado State Rams in action against the Eastern Michigan Hurons this coming Saturday, live at 11 o'clock Central, 12 o'clock Mountain. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, and Steve Alvarez will be on hand to bring you that game this Saturday on Prime Sports Network, an affiliate of the Prime Network. Dave and I will be in Columbia, Missouri, where the Tigers will try to hold off the Hurricane of Miami. That will be a formidable chore, I believe. Miami, an excellent club, year in and year out. Well, the mascots don't seem to be at odds with each other. They're just having a good time dancing down here. I guess that's what a golden gopher looks like. I've never seen one. I guess you're right. That's, is that clone or Cy? We're not sure. <laughs> I'll tell you, now it's vitally important for Iowa State to allow Minnesota three downs and force them to punt. You can't let the Golden Gophers sustain any type of drive and utilize much time left on the clock. You still need two scores if you're Iowa State. And the bad news for Iowa State defensively, Mike Shane, their outstanding All-America candidate at linebacker, is going to be out for the rest of today with a bruised ankle. Hmm. You might think about an onside kick here. We'll see what Jim Walden has up his sleeve. They do it. They got it. They got it. What a play by Shudak. A knuckleball. And Iowa State gets the ball back. Tim Baker falls on it. 49-yard line. Well, that's better than three downs and out, forcing a punt. You know, Iowa State, Tim Walden feels like Jeff Shudak can kick the ball almost as well as somebody can throw it. He makes the ball do what he wants. You can see that time, an excellent kick. He just kind of sidewinds it, as you mentioned, Dave, just a knuckleball. Minnesota didn't appear to have any idea that they might try a kick. You have to think that, 6.34 to go. That's oh, yeah. a pretty good possibility of an onside kick. You know, if I can call it from up here, <laughs> something's got to be going on. And the coaches, they fell asleep a little bit on that one. Now, Orberg going long distance. He's got it. No, it's incomplete. Oh. Pass intended for Troy Moore, and I thought he had it, but he couldn't quite hang on. Foggy was the guy that stripped it away. But I tell you, that's a ball you have to catch. Foggy is in decent position, but Troy Moore clearly with an opportunity to make a catch. See, football games come down to big plays. You got four or five big plays in the game, and you've got to make the majority of them if you're going to win. Now, this ball is perfectly thrown. You can see Moore actually, and let's give him the benefit of the doubt, might have lost it in the sun, but right in his hands, and the golden opportunity dropped. Draw play up to Bryant. He runs out of running room across midfield, a pickup of about four on the play. That'll Troy be Moore, uh, excuse me, Dave, Troy Moore, a uh, walk-on from Pullman, Washington. That'll be one that he doesn't want to watch tomorrow in film session. Jim Walden, of course, the coach at Washington State, and Troy Moore knew all about him out there in the Northwest, and Troy Moore decided to come to the Midwest and play at Iowa State. Now it's third and seven. Holberg, the three-step drop. Now he's looking to run. Now he throws it. Blackfelt, he has it. Still on his feet, down to the 26. Derek Fisher stopped him, but a first down for Iowa State. Black Pelty again. I think Troy Moore is the one guy that winds up with the football. As a Minnesota golfer is hurt, Oberg doing it. Black Pelty is the guy, excuse me. Does a nice job of just kind of picking and choosing his spots, making a guy miss here, gaining four or five extra yards. Black Pelty really has played well today. He's caught the football just about every time he's had the opportunity. If you take a look at the injured Golden Gopher. Derek Fisher is down. Looks like another cramp for the uh, Golden Gophers. They're used to playing in the cooler climbs and plus indoors at Minnesota. That that's, looks just to be a cramp, is. yeah. He's cramped up on the calf. Fisher goes off. Well, the crowd booed 
That was not really not a reaction for Fisher, but a reaction more for Daryl Thompson, who went down and allowed Minnesota to kick a field goal at the end of the first half with the clock winding down. You know, in a game like this where cramps may become a problem, the trainer does all he can do to tell guys before, hey, take lots of fluids, you've got to eat some salt. And of course, guys never drink as many fluids as they should. First and 10 for the Cyclones. Over across the middle. Troy Moore drops another one. And that'll bring up second and 10. Boy, you think about that field goal now, Dave, at the uh, end of the first half and how big it is. If not for that, it's 27-20. Cyclones driving for the tying and maybe the go-ahead with a two-point conversion. Well, I can tell you, Jim Waldman has not forgotten that particular play. Very, very upset at the halftime about it. Iowa State has got to try to get into the end zone on this drive, obviously. And the last time they had Blaze Bryant wide open, he decided to throw to Troy. Albert looking all over the field. Two or three receivers. Now he drops the football, and I think Minnesota has it. Minnesota recovers a fumble. Oberg went down and coughed up the ball. Eddie Miles was the guy who came up with it. What happens sometimes, watch where he carries the football. Actually drops it. It looked like he had lost.